50 years ago, the decisions of three men, JFK. Kennedy's head is in a vice. Khrushchev. Khrushchev is now feeling very vulnerable. And Castro. Castro is getting angrier and angrier. Pushed the world to the brink of nuclear war in a battle to see who would blink first. All three believe that once the war started, there would be no stopping it. And on October the 14th, 1962, spy planes confirmed America's fears. The photograph showed missile transporters, fuel trucks, radar vans, nuclear warhead bunkers under construction. And intelligence reports informed Kennedy that at that very moment, more nuclear hardware was on its way. From October 15th until October 22nd, John Kennedy kept the existence of these missiles in Cuba a secret. We knew what the Russians were up to. So long as they didn't know that we knew, we might have time to plan our response. JFK, that first morning, asked of us every possible option he had. Military options, every possible diplomatic option, even the possibility of doing nothing at all, though he himself felt that the country would not stand for that. The nemesis of John F. Kennedy during the Cuban Missile Crisis is thought to be General Curtis LeMay, the gruff and grumpy general who really wanted to just blow Cuba to smithereens. Tense. You know, it had never happened before. The people in the White House weren't the most experienced in the world. Uh, the Joint Chiefs weren't the most flexible. So there were weaknesses everywhere one turned. The Joint Chiefs opposed the blockade, in particular a negotiated solution. They thought we should go in and hit the Russians with everything we had, as one of them said. It sounded pretty good. It sounded pretty tough. Kennedy asked his top air chiefs, can you assure me that a U.S. airstrike would be surgical, go and knock out all Soviet missiles? And they said, no, sir. There's a high probability we get most of them. There is a possibility of, of some people in the southeastern part of the United States dying in a nuclear attack. So it finally comes down that no matter how many advisors you have, frequently they are divided and the president must finally choose. Within the past week, unmistakable evidence has established the fact that a series of offensive missile sites is now in preparation on that imprisoned island. To halt this offensive buildup, a strict quarantine on all offensive military equipment and the shipment to Cuba is being initiated. I tried to put some language in the speech that indicated that we were prepared to do what we had to do if we had to do it, but we preferred the blockade, which in effect put the ball in Khrushchev's court. It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States, requiring a full retaliatory response upon the Soviet Union. Pretty chilling line. And these actions may only be the beginning. Thank you and good night. Well, what's happening is that Khrushchev is calibrating his risks. He decides he's not going to risk the big missiles in the high seas. Those aren't going to make it to Cuba. But he hasn't given up on his major gambit. October 27th became known as Black Saturday because of all the 13 days of the missile crisis, it was the most dangerous. Things began happening that neither Khrushchev nor Kennedy had predicted and that they didn't fully control. One piece of bad news after another. When we began our meeting that Saturday morning, 
passed around the table was a letter that had come in from Khrushchev the night before, and this one was personal, emotional. I wandered around a bit. Nevertheless, buried among those threats and denials were some hints that he wanted a way out. We sat at the table trying to figure out how to answer that letter, and then a second letter came in. This one wasn't personal. This one sounded as though it had been drafted by the military uh, presidium in Moscow. It demanded that before they take any action at all, we take NATO missiles out of Turkey. I was going to go check with somebody who changed the field uh, before we get a chance to apply and announce it publicly in the field before we receive it. There must, must have been an overruling in Moscow. Uh, John F. Kennedy was under intense pressure. His military generals were saying to him, the longer you wait, the more operational these missile silos will be. We need to launch this attack now, Mr. President. Jack Kennedy was in a minority of one. Everybody else in the room was saying that you cannot take this deal that Khrushchev is offering you, this implicit exchange. Kennedy was the only person in the room who really was determined to explore that exchange. You hear him on tape saying to his advisors, you know, how am I going to tell the world why I'm going to war when Khrushchev has, has offered me something that really doesn't cost very much? We don't really like the missiles in Turkey. They're old missiles, really quite useless, and they're provocative. He sent his brother, Robert Kennedy, to talk to Anatoly Dobrynin, the Soviet ambassador to Washington, to say, we will secretly swap the obsolete US missiles aimed at the Soviet Union from Turkey if you withdraw the missiles from Cuba. We will not admit that we agree to a swap, and we will not do it at the same time, but we will do it. You'll have to trust us that we will do it. This is Radio Moscow. Premier Khrushchev has sent a message to President Kennedy today. The Soviet government has ordered the dismantling of weapons in Cuba, as well as their creating and return to the Soviet Union. 